Hi everybody, in this video, let's look at some questions from a textbook, from two textbook. Chapter 10, Gradient of Straight Line, page 203. In this chapter, you learn about how to find the gradient of a straight line. Still remember, there are two formulae we can use to find the gradient of a straight line. The first one is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Remember, y on the top. And the second formula is negative y intercept over x intercept. If you are using this formula, be careful, you need to add a negative sign in front of it. And another one more thing which is very important is, remember this, on x-axis, any point which lies on x-axis, the y-coordinate will be always equal to 0. On y-axis, any point that lies on y-axis, the x-coordinate will be equal to 0. Okay, now let's look at question number 6. The gradient of straight line PQ is equal to negative 1. So gradient of PQ is equal to negative 1. And the coordinate of P is 2 comma negative 1. The horizontal distance of point Q is 3 units to the left of Y axis. So be careful for this part. This actually tell you the x coordinate, not y coordinate. Let me draw a diagram for you. Now this is y axis, this is x axis. So point Q is somewhere around here. Not here, because the question tells you to the left of y axis. And how many units? to the left. 3 units. Here is 3 units. So if this is 3 units, that means the x coordinate will be negative 3 because on the left of y axis. So this sentence actually tell you the x coordinate of this point, not the y coordinate. Now we know q is equal to negative 3. Why? We don't know the y. We want to find the y coordinate of this point. Okay, let me erase this one first. Given by the questions, the gradient of this straight line is equal to negative 1. And try to think, how do we get the gradient of a straight line? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? So gradient of pq is equal to negative 1. How do we get the gradient? y2 minus y1, this minus this. It's totally up to you. You want to take y minus negative 1 or negative 1 minus y. But personally, I would suggest you to put the unknown in front. So y minus negative 1. Remember y on the top. So if you are using y, you take this minus this for the x part. You need to follow the sequence, negative 3, minus 2, negative 3, minus 2. Okay, this will give us the gradient, which is equal to negative 1. So negative, negative, you will actually get positive. So this negative 3, negative 2, you get negative 5. Okay, so y plus 1 is equal to negative 1 times negative 5, which is equal to? 5, positive 5. So y is equal to 5 minus 1. You will get 4. Now you know the coordinate of point Q is negative 3, 4. Okay, so this is the answer for question number 6. Now let's go to question number 7. If the gradient of a straight line is 2, the gradient is 2, and the y intercept. is equal to negative 18. So why is the x intercept? Determine the x intercept of the straight line. Okay, so you remember just now I told you, 
there is another formula that uh, beside this formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 we also can use another formula when we are given x intercept and y intercept gradient equal to 2 gradient can be counted by using this formula minus y intercept negative y intercept over x intercept this will give us a gradient which is equal to 2. Now we have the y-intercept which is negative 18. I am going to bring this value going here. x-intercept. Now what I need to do is to get the x-intercept. So negative negative will give you positive. Now, so this, I'm going to bring it up, so this I will bring down. So 18 over 2 is equal to x intercept. So now I know the x intercept is equal to 18 divided by 2, which is equal to 9. Question number 8. Calculate the gradient of a straight line MN. If the horizontal distance of P from the y-axis is 6 units. Horizontal distance from, of P from the y-axis means here. How many units? 6 units. Okay, so now we know this x will, the x coordinate of point P will be 6. Okay, now we want to calculate the gradient. So just now, uh, you can actually use this formula, negative y intercept over x intercept to get the gradient. If let's say you don't want to use this formula, you want to use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Still remember what I told you just now? On y-axis, x is equal to zero. So the full coordinate of point of this point is zero negative 8. On x-axis, y is equal to 0. Okay, now the gradient is equal to 0 minus negative 8 over, since just now I took 0 minus negative 8, so for the x part I need to do the same way, 6 minus 0. So this will give us a gradient of this straight line. So this is equal to 8, this is equal to 6. So we simplify it, you will get 4 over 3. So let's say, if you don't want to use this formula, we can use another formula, which is negative y intercept over x intercept. Negative, negative will give you positive. So same thing, we simplify it, you get 4 over 3. Exactly the same answer. Now let's go to question number 9. If point A and B are on the same straight line, with the gradient, the gradient of point, uh, the gradient of the straight line AB is equal to 4 over 3. And point A is equal the coordinates of point A are 0, 8. We want to determine the coordinate of point B. And the question tells that B is actually uh, lies on x axis. On x axis, y is equal to 0. Okay, now we don't know the, the x. We want to find the x. Gradient is equal to 4 over 3. How do we get the gradient? Y2, uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So normally I will prefer put the unknown in front. So here I will be using 0 minus 8. x minus 0. This will give us a gradient which is 4 over 3. So negative 8 over x is equal to 4 over 3. I will be using, uh, I will do the cross multiplication here. 4 times x for x, 
3 times negative 8, you get negative 24. So x is equal to negative 24 over 4. x is equal to negative 6. And the question asks you to determine the coordinate. So we cannot stop here. Our final answer must be in coordinate form. Negative 6, 0. Okay, so this is the coordinates of point B. Now, let's go to question number 10. The diagonal above is a roof of a terrace house if the height of the roof is 5 meter. So this is 5 meter. Calculate the gradient of the roof. Uh, of the roof. So, so I will assume that you are here, you want to go up like this, so the gradient will be positive. The gradient is equal to word, uh, horizontal, sorry, vertical distance. When we take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, this is this curve uh, this gives us the vertical distance and this gives us horizontal distance. Okay, so the vertical distance here is 5. Horizontal distance, this is actually 7.5, right? 7.5. So just press your calculator, 5 over 7.5, which will give you 2 over 3. How about B? The length of the slang of the roof uh, Okay, the question is talking about, we want to find the length here. So I, I let me draw a triangle for you. So this is 5 meter, and this is 7.5. Why is the length here? So this is, uh, we can use Pythagorean theorem to help us to get the length here. This is hypotenuse, which is the longer side of a right angle triangle. So the slang, the length of the slang is equal to 5 square plus 7.5 square and don't forget we need to square root it. 5 square plus 7.5 square square root it you will get 0 .0, uh, sorry, 9.01. I just round off it to two decimal places. So 9.01 meter. Okay, now let's proceed to question 11. I think the questions for this part is actually not correct. I'm going to change the question become, um, calculate the value of V if the, the acceleration if the acceleration of the motorcycle is 0 0.88 per square meter I'm sorry, 0 0.88 meter per second square when t, okay I'm going to change the, I think the, this question is actually not correct, it should be like this this should be acceleration Okay, now let's look at part A. The diagram shows a journey of a motorcycle in 60 seconds. State the speed of the motorcycle at the constant phase. Constant phase. It means here. Constant. So this one you don't have to calculate. 20 meter per second. Just look at the, look at, uh, Look at the graph, then you will be able to get the answer. So in this, we also can call it as uniform speed. The speed doesn't change, just remain unchanged for this 15 seconds. B. Calculate the value of V if the acceleration of the motorcycle is 0 0.88 meter per uh, second square when T is equal to 15 second. So the acceleration for this part is equal to 0 
So how do we get the acceleration? We take the final speed, which is here, minus the initial speed, right? And divided by the time taken, so which is 40 minus 15. Then we will get the acceleration, which is equal to 0 0.88. Okay, so let me continue over here. V minus 20 is equal to 0 0.88 times 0 0.88 times 25, which will give you 22. So V is equal to 22 plus 20. V is equal to 42. Okay, now let's do the last question. The cross sections area of the bridge wall that is shaped as uh, right angle triangle is 12 square meters and the height is 6 meter. So calculate the gradient and the area of the slanted surface of the stone wall. So I just assume that from here you want to go up like this. So what is the gradient? So the gradient will be positive in this situation. So I just assume that you want to go up like this. From here go up like this. If you from here go down, then the gradient will be negative. Okay. Now, um, given by the questions, the the area, the cross section area, is equal to twelve square meter, and the height is six meter. So from here, can we get the base length? Yes. How do we get the area? 1 over 2 times the base length, right? Okay, I just let it be x. Time high, which is 6, will give us the area, which is 12. You remember the questions? So here we can simplify it. So 3x is equal to 12. So x is equal to 12 divided by 3, which will give you 4. So this is actually horizontal distance. So you know that this is 4 meter and here is 6 meter. Now we have the horizontal distance and the vertical distance, then we should have no problem to get the gradient. Okay, vertical distance divided by horizontal distance, so you will get 3 over 2. Now how about the second part of the question? We want to find the area of the slanted surface of the stone wall. So it means that we want to find this area. So this is actually a rectangle, right? You know this is 2 given by the question. So if we can find the length here, we just take this times this, then we will get the area for this part, right? So the length here is actually here. We can use Pythagorean theorem to help us to get the length here. So I just length, uh, let the length here be um, P. Okay, just let it be H. So H is equal to 4 square plus 6 square square root. Okay, press our calculator. 4, uh, 4 square plus 6 square and square root it. So this will actually give you square root of 52. Now, area of the slanted surface, slanted surface will be equal to, this is rectangle, right? 2 times square root of 52. Square root of 52 times 2. Okay, so we just correct our answer to two decimal places, then it will be 14.42 square meter. Okay, so this answer for this question. For this video, I stop here first. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.